Hello, my name is Michael Hennessy. In this series of videos, Shea Phelan, Kieran Collins and I will visit farmers who are working with the Enable Conservation Tillage Project over the last five years. We will visit these farms throughout the year to see how they're getting on using their establishment system, but also to see how they're controlling grass weeds in these systems, of which some of the weeds are problematic on many of the farms. Okay, so we're here in uh, Kessel Magnor today, just uh, on the farm of Rob and Billy Coleman. Fox validation area is here, about 35 acres. I think one of the biggest problems here, Kieran, was sterile broom at the time. If we go back to the start of the story, maybe really, maybe some of the background, Rob, on where it all started. Yeah, like you said, Kieran, you know, Dad sort of went away from the plough around, you know, the early 2000s. It's been sort of a roller coaster of figuring out since then, because what we were doing back then and what we can do now very different because the land has changed. I suppose we've learned a bit along the way. We've got, you know, good information and we have some really great people who deal with us on the farm here. After the, the say, the initial figuring out of the mint till, um, the context of, you know, chop straw and break crops and things like that, we um, we definitely improved our rotation a lot in that time as well. Mint till um, evolved into maybe uh, lower disturbance again, uh, touches of no till and, and we'll say, lower disturbance mint till. We, you know, we would give things a scratch, you know, there's all different levels of how much disturbance we do, uh, depending on where we are in the rotation. So where we are now is any mix of any one of those tools. And you've used a lot of organic manures and as you say, the rotation as well. So I suppose, have you seen a, a change? And I see you've a spade in your hand there. You're obviously looking at it quite closely. You know, what have you seen over that time? And Yeah, it, it's exactly that, Kieran. really. We have seen the soil evolve. We would see structure, um, you know, is, is easier to maintain. We would see that kind of, as we're doing less, maybe things are improving, certainly at depth, it, but actually the small stable aggregates that you get from roots, from, you know, the organic manures, from the earthworms, those are very resilient. And uh, we would see land draining better. We would see uh, the, the color of the land maybe darkening slightly. Yeah. And uh, I think, you know, by no means <laughs> everything is perfect, but over the course of time, we've seen enough to give us great encouragement that we're going in the right direction. Yeah. And uh, any decision on the farm now, if there's a difficult decision to be made, will nearly always, after a lot of trashing out and a lot of arguing, come to the best long-term decision. You mentioned there, like uh, it just picked up and there, there's no kind of one cultivation system fits all. I was just interested that you have, you have a direct drill, but you also practice some mint till still. So maybe the decisions on why you would do one or the other, or what's the thought process there? Absolutely, yeah. It's very hard for me to answer the question of what system do you run, because we have never been very purist about any one system. And it's something that, you know, we're always kind of led, like we mentioned, the spade is at the heart of it. So. Um, if we took uh, the context in every single situation, after the oilseed rape, we would give that maybe a touch of the straw harrow and we would probably use the tine drill to sow the next crop because that is a little more disturbance than the disc drill. So even within the two no-till drills, there's a level of cultivation that sometimes we would like, mm. especially say if we were getting later in the autumn, we would sort of lean away from the disc drill because you need that bit of disturbance. Uh, the last thing I'd say there is that what you can do when you're planting a bean is very different to what you have to do, say, when you're planting a small little oil seed. If you're planting oilseed rape, you would do more to try and make life easier for the oilseed rape. Whereas when it comes to the bean, the bean can overcome a lot of hardship. Grass weeds would sometimes be seen as a barrier, maybe, to min minimum cultivation. And you did see uh, quite a, an increase in the level of sterile brome, I think it was initially, where that, how that evolved. The start of the project, maybe five years ago, brome was what we used to talk about the most in terms of grass weeds. Now we rarely mention it because uh, I think that the, the, the rotation has worked in tandem with the cultivation system, in tandem with better information on maybe the, 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 the chemistry side of things, which is probably really the last five or 10 percent. I know that you have Italian ryegrass or ryegrass in general, so we bought perennial and Italian I think on the farm now um, and there's obviously issues there with chemistry as well in terms of resistance. I know you've got some testing done so where are we with that now and maybe what's the what are, what are we learning from, from or how we're trying to control it, I suppose? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's been one of the great benefits of the project is that we have fierce information on resistance and uh, we've been in the crops more as well. Anytime you guys came out or Michael came out or, you know, um, John came out, we were in the crops looking and poking around. So every time we came out and we could see exactly 
how good a job we had done with either chemistry or um, you know cultivation systems you know that you could see in reality what has actually been the, the results of your decision um, to come back to the first part of your question um, in the background all the time where brome was the main target and we put a lot of time and energy and effort into sorting it the ryegrass did tend uh, to, to kind of get neglected a small bit um, we ended up using the same chemistry on the same weeds for you know a number of years in a row so the Italian ryegrass um, is, uh, is on the back foot because the rotation has improved but at the same time it's probably where the brome was you know, maybe three or four years ago whereas we feel like we have made progress towards it but we still have an issue that needs tackling. We don't have uh, axial uh, that works in anymore, we don't have Pacific or Broadway, um, we have got uh, the Stratus Ultra on the, um, on the beans and we have got AstroCurb on the rape and we've got the spring element of the spring oats to take out with Roundup. So the more you rely on those chemicals, the worse they get over time and I think protecting our chemistry, which we, we do need them and it's yeah. fantastic to have them, but if you start abusing them and if you start asking too much of them, you'll run out of road quite quickly I think. Rob has moved from a sort of continuous winter wheat, continuous winter barley scenario to bring in good rotations in with beans, oilseed rape, spring oats. And that's really helped him diversify his, his, his farming mindset and his way of thinking. And that coupled with, you know, the use of cover crops, different cultivation systems, it's all, it's all helped. It's all, they're all parts of the jigsaw when it comes to controlling grass weeds. On each farm, the ECD project selected a field with a high weed burden to monitor management practice. The ECT project staff used a grid methodology to count weeds each year before harvest. The results reflected how successful or not the weed control measures worked. On the map, squares coloured blue or green have a low weed population and squares coloured orange or red have a high weed population. We talk about what happened in the, in the validation focus area. So I suppose initially we were following on long-term winter barley anyway, but that's the starting point and our, our, our main weed at the time was the Royal Road. Wasn't it? That's certainly the start of the story here. And we had uh, a problem that was probably of our own making. We like growing winter barley, we like the early harvest, we like the straw we were getting off it. And bit by bit, brome was becoming more of a problem. We had certain amounts of control with stale seabeds, but it had gotten to the point where we weren't going to do it anymore because it had gotten slightly out of hand. So that was the, yeah. the first year of the project we were dealing with, with a serious brome problem. Brome, sorry, that first starting point. And so year one, we went to spring beans anyway, which obviously was a change of rotation and obviously allowed an autumn cover crop. So I suppose really just looking at the map, you know you got very good control obviously after the beans. Absolutely yeah so so we were very much soil health focused so the big cover crop was actually grazed by animals which was you know something that really appeals to us and then we'll say with a roundup before the spring beans you're getting a kill in the springtime and then a graminocyte on the beans that was a great start to sort of wipe the slate clean in terms of grass weeds. Uh, what we thought then is that you're sort of out and you're done and you're finished with a big break like that or with a good kind of clean up but actually I suppose there's a bit of dormancy there's a few seeds that come through so we would have seen maybe an inkling of that problem in the, in the next year which grows into a, a bigger problem the third year if you keep okay. growing cereals so the beans is a huge step forward um, and, and, and definitely a key part of the whole thing. What you do after that then is it's kind of the next part okay, of the and, and, and on to that in year two, we obviously went back with winter wheat there and there was a focus here on higher seed rates. And obviously the herbicide program was crucial here in terms of pre pre-M followed by a post-emergent herbicide. Certainly once the rotation is in place and strong, the, the, the probably the, the sprays come secondary to that and they're they're fundamental absolutely. Um, the establishment system after the beans was very simple, just straight in with a John Deere Direct, which I think was a big help. Maybe in this part of the world when we're direct drilling, we tend to go a bit earlier. So an early sowing date doesn't help your grass weed issue, but at the same time, it's such a clean start with the beans, that was helpful. Very difficult autumn that year, there was a lot of bad weather in, in, in yeah. early October, but we still managed to establish a good crop of wheat. I went on to do very well with very little brome in it. I won't say there was none, and maybe yeah. we expected there to be none after the great break, but there were still hints of it. Okay. Um, but I think that we saw, uh, with a good pre-emerge herbicide, and we followed up with a strong spring harvest as well. Um, we had uh, we had a very clean crop of wheat afterwards. Having said that, I, I wasn't sure if the well, if spring herbicide was necessary. I wasn't sure how much it was doing. Um, we uh, got uh, just, I suppose, 
a few sticks and we just turned off the boom for maybe yes. five yards and it was hugely beneficial to us to have a look and see what okay. the spring herbicide was actually okay. doing. We saw it was definitely, maybe it wasn't killing all the brome, it was stunting the brome, but where we turned off that boom, we saw that the brome was actually coming up. Now we did it in a bad place in the field. Okay. We were looking to see and it was uh, very helpful to kind of demonstrate exactly how important okay. it was. So then Rob, we went back to year three then, and we were back at Winter Barley. I suppose you had good success in, in the two previous years. So there was a steel seed, stale seed bed um, after the wheat, obviously, and you were back in Winter Barley. I think you tried um, a hybrid variety just to increase the competition as well in terms of the growing. We had good success with the hybrid, hybrid varieties all the way along. We had good yield and we had good straw. Um, what we were kind of maybe hoping was that it was so clean after the wheat that we would have a very clean crop of barley. And it was a good crop of barley and there was no huge problem, but you could see um, parts of the grass weed sneaking in around the place because we don't have the same herbicide options on the winter barley, meaning that we get a fully established crop, which helps competition-wise, but it is maybe giving your, um, your last, we'll say, spray off before you plant the crop. It's going a little bit earlier too, which isn't ideal from a grass weed yeah. point of view. So at the end of those winter barley years, uh, uh, growing it as a second cereal, it definitely brings a burden then that needs to be sorted out. Again, yeah. Whereas we had reset the clock, and I think that maybe towards the end of the story, we'll get to that, our rotation strengthened again after this. Yes, and I suppose this was also the time when we saw maybe a change in weed profile in the focus validation area, where we had seen a high level of brome, but we, we started to see Italian ryegrass creeping up at that stage, right? We started to see the Italian ryegrass creeping up, exactly, Karen. The Italian ryegrass was uh, in a small portion of the farm, and it crept around the farm from there, and suddenly we started seeing it moving more consistently. So as we were focused on the brome, we saw that this ryegrass problem was starting to get increased a little bit now. Enough to just say that, hold on a second now, we're ready after again learning our lesson with the brome, we should get on top of this before it gets any worse, yes. while we still have the chemistry that works. Yes. So I think that building the program around rotation, your cultivation system, um, not just the chemicals on their own. It's not to rely on them. Because they'll eventually be become weaker and we need them and we need to protect them so that we should mine them. Okay. So, so anyway, year four, Rob, uh, changed the spring cropping again and we went with, with, with spring oats here. Uh, again, from the map, reasonably good control of, of the brome in particular, really, I think. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Once we kind of got on top of the brome at the start, we kind of stayed on top of it. That second year um, cereal, we'd say the, the wheat followed by the barley, gave us a bit of a problem, not a big problem. Yes. And then the spring break with spring oats got us back kind of on top of it again. So you'll see that there was a small hint here and there, but by and large, there was no abundance of wheat. So that, that was a good step forward. And so obviously the spring oats opened up the window for, for winter wheat. And I suppose there's a very interesting picture emerged after the winter wheat. Again, I suppose just in terms of the plan, it was used to higher seed rate, pre followed by four stem again was the, the whole plan there. But I think from the maps here, we've seen a little evolution of the weeds in terms of, I think you've pretty much got very well on top of brome in the, certainly in this focus validation area anyway. Yeah. What we've probably learned is that our rotation was fairly strong, but because this Italian ryegrass problem was kind of coming to the forefront and, and getting a bit stronger, and um, this two-year cereal followed by a break, probably not good enough for us anymore. Our, our herbicides aren't as effective as they used to be. So what we've actually moved towards, while we did grow a clean crop of winter wheat and we grow a good crop of winter wheat there, we were in with the knapsack spraying out little bits of ryegrass there because we didn't want to be sowing the seeds of a big problem in the future. Chemistry is really the last tool in the box. It's less than, you know, than 20% of, of the entire control measure. Um, so if we were to draw any one big thing from what Rob is doing here, it's the effect that the crop rotation is having on his whole farming system. It's allowing him to alternate chemistry. It's allowing him to alternate sowing dates the alternating, alternating of spring crops and winter cereal crops. It's just giving him loads of options when it's come to control grass weeds, especially grass weeds like sterile brome in cereals, in, in, a, in a min till or a no till scenario. So if I was to say, like from the focus validation area and all the things that you've practiced there, are they things that are happening on the rest of the farm now as well, Rob? We're trying to be proactive about it yeah. and we're trying to make the place as resilient as possible. So to be fair, I think that the oil seed rape was a huge help in the rotation there. 
the curb uh, is, a, is, a, is a massive second chance there. Uh, the beans are massive help, and any spring crop that you get a, a glyphosate on before is I a huge help. I suppose that leads us nicely into the focus validation area now, so going forward, you have a lovely cover crop in here and you're going to follow up with beans now rather than a winter barley, which you might have traditionally done. That's and it, yeah. your plan for herbicide here, or maybe none? So, so um, part of the reason for growing the oats and, and, and the mix of cover um, species is to help the land and help the ground and to keep it covered from the from the winter rainfall. It'll allow us to sow beans kind of in any kind of window at all. Once November, December it gets anywhere dry at all, we'll try winter beans maybe in the drier ground and we might wait for spring beans in the heavier bit down at the bottom here. Um, the process there would be to plant the beans and to leave the field for maybe two or three weeks as the cover crop greens back up again. And then one application of glyphosate will kill the cover crop, the beans will be just about to emerge. Yeah. And that dying cover crop will act as a mat, a soil cover, which doesn't allow weeds so to come through. And hopefully maybe in this area to have no herbicide possibly? No pre-emerge herbicide in the yep. beans. I would still, even if it's clean, because the beans is my one big chance to clean up ground from yes. a grassy point of view, I would still be going with graminicide, graminicide in the anyway. springtime. Perfect. Which I think that while down the road, I'd love to be dropping that. I would say that we're a little bit early. And yep. I think that with all the enthusiasm for only using what we definitely need, like I've, I've one fear that lots of farmers might be interested in, I suppose. The perception is that when I adopt mintail, especially shallow cultivation, I'm going to have a bigger grass weed problem. Can I ask you from your experience here in the program and that you've both systems, experience of both systems, when you've changed to direct drilling now, uh, do you think that has lessened the grass weed burden over mintail? Uh, I suppose the short answer is yes. I think whatever establishment system you have, if you have a poor rotation, grass weeds are going to be a big part of life and you're going to be heavily reliant on the herbicides. So if your rotation is strong, it's helping your grass weed, but on top of that, it's giving you a much easier sowing window yeah. because ground is kind of in your favour. And if, there, if I could finish with this one, if there was one sort of thing that you'd have picked up from the five years of the programme or one bit of advice maybe that you would say to other farmers, what would it be? It definitely got me in the fields more. The ability to make good management decisions come back to how much time you spent observing what's going on. Uh, the second part of it might be, I suppose in those five years, I can't believe how, we'll say one time Pacific used to do something for us, or Broadway used to do something, and it doesn't anymore. And they're essential for us to be able to continue to grow the crops we grow, so we need to mind them. So I suppose spotting a problem early, okay. and just, we didn't mention it down here in this corner of this field, we spread that off completely with glyphosate about a quarter of an acre. And I'm delighted we did it because that stitch in time to say that we took away the weed burden over the course of the next five, 10 or 15 years, I think we look back and say those were good decisions because we haven't uh, kind of decided to make money in the short term at the expense of the long term. A huge thanks to all the farmers for the benefit of their experience over the last five years. If you want to find out more about each of these farmers, Visit our website, chagas.ie, and search the ECT project.